Hi, I'm Normans from Algworks, and I'm here in Las Vegas at Spring One platform, and I'm here with Oliver. If you don't know him, he is one of the commuter of the Spring, so a lot of things that we use in our day, he is responsible to write for us. So, hi Oliver, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, nice. So, can you introduce a little bit about yourself? Of course. Um, so my name is Oliver Gierke. I work for Pivotal, the company behind the Spring Framework, and um, I'm leading the Spring Data project at Pivotal. Uh, so I'm mostly concerned with like the data access APIs, like support for JPA, MongoDB, and like all the other NoSQL stores we have. That's that's it usually. Oh, very nice. So, what are your expectations about Spring for the next years? You can talk a little bit about what do you think? What do you want? What we've just introduced here at the conference are our plans for uh, Spring Framework 5, um, the next major generation of the Spring Framework. It's going to be released in uh, March 17, and we've just released a milestone one in like a week ago or something. Um, and the most most important, I think, new feature is going to be the support for reactive APIs and reactive web APIs. So that means the, the framework will get another uh, like a, another web framework, basically a re reactive web framework, sim very similar to Spring MVC, so that uh, users can can basically transfer their uh, their knowledge to that to the reactive world, which is uh, so the the framework is completely non-blocking then, and uh, you basically write just like Spring MVC controllers like you did before, but get the benefits of of, of those reactive APIs like scalability and whatnot. Um, that's sort of extending. Or that started in the, in, the, in, the, in the framework, but is now extending into like all of the other ecosystem projects. Because once you've received the request and have get access to the parameters and the payload in a, in a reactive way, you of course need to structure all your domain code and your, your your service layer code, your data access code, and make that work with those reactive APIs in the first place. So we started uh, a couple of efforts, uh, prototypical efforts in. Uh, uh, a while ago, and there's also a, a ro already a working prototype for uh, the Spring Data um, project for for MongoDB, so that you can basically just like pipe down the flux and monotypes that you get from from Spring MVC uh, to uh, to your data store, and then basically have the entire the entire request pipeline be reactive. Um, that's that's very early days for us. We're looking to release a first milestone ourselves in. Uh, in timeline with with Spring Framework RC1, um, and um, so that that's sort of the the topic that like everything everyone is kind of working around. Another big thing, of course, is that we've moved the baseline from Java 6 to Java 8 with the Spring Framework, so that allows us to rewrite a lot of parts in the in the code base, in the Spring Data code base, for example, to to use like lambdas and optionals and all the good stuff that Java 8 brings. So it's kind of kind of an exercise as well to to do that. So um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to March next year because that will mean I, a lot of work that's now still ahead of me will, <laughs> will be behind me and uh, we hopefully get a um, cool new generation of the framework into users' hands. So. Yeah. And about this reactive program, do you think this will be the future? I, I mean, everything will be reactive or do you think the Spring MVC traditional, like today, nowadays will be, should you, you still be using, you know? Uh, that's a good question, and I think that's something that um, a lot of people might get wrong because they, because we currently have this much attention on this reactive space, but I don't think that the like the server-based programming model is going to go anywhere uh, in the near future. So, uh, so it's meaning it's not going to be like abandoned because um, the reactive uh, the reactive pro way of programming is really one where you um, where you uh, when you that you use when you need a lot of scalability it's not you don't get like necessarily faster code in the first place but a lot of a lot more scalable code but at the same time it also um, makes some things more complicated like debugging right how do you actually debug a reactive flow that's like um, where the actual pipeline is built up over a dedicated set of steps and um, so there will still be some some use cases where um, where people st will stick to the to the more traditional APIs. One other aspect that's very important there is that the entire react uh, relational data access doesn't really work too well on on reactive um, 
uh, on a reactive programming model because it's inherently blocking, JDBC is inherently blocking. So until we see a major revision of, of JDBC and that basically meaning that's going to take a while um, because it's not going to make it into Java, uh, Java 9 anymore but then maybe 10 or something in four to five years. Um, with 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 that aspect, like a lot of the traditional, more traditional uh, applications built on relational databases, don't really nicely fit into that area. So you, I guess, you'll see a very selective, uh, selective set of applications that that actually need those scalability requirements and can be moved to other data access uh, APIs to leverage that new that new style of programming. But at the same time, um, the a lot of traditional API. Uh, application staying on, on the traditional APIs and Spring Framework basically making sure that you can still combine the two and um, yeah, it's not like a real breaking change for, for, the, for the developer in terms of I can do only one or the other. So. Okay, I got you, I got you. So thank you very much, Oliver, for your time here. You're most for us. Thank you very much. So say goodbye for Brazilian guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so for you that uh, watched us, like the video, comment, please, and share with your friends. Uh, I think they will love to hear about Oliver. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.